I'm Dr. Lynn Richardson, and I'm the Vice Chair of Emergency Medicine at the Mount Sinai Health System. And I'm joining you today to talk about racial and ethnic disparities in COVID-19. There is growing evidence that in fact, African-Americans and Latinos are being disproportionately affected by COVID-19. And there are a number of reasons why that's true. For example, there's some well-publicized New York City data reporting that African-Americans and Latinos have a death rate that is twice that of whites from COVID-19. There are other parts of the country that have different numbers. But I do think it is important to understand all of the reasons why this terrible epidemic is affecting certain uh, groups in our population even more tragically than other groups. The first thing to keep in mind is that there are certain medical conditions that interfere with your body's ability to fight off the COVID virus. So if you have uh, a disease like cancer or diabetes or heart failure, or if you're on any medication that suppresses your immune system, uh, which might include things like HIV or various inflammatory conditions, all of these things would make it harder for your body to fight off COVID if you become infected. And so you would be more likely to become severely ill and you may be more likely to die. Some of these types of conditions are more prevalent in the Black and Hispanic community. So there may be some of these underlying medical conditions are driving some of the differences in death rates. Age is also an important consideration. The older you are, the more likely you are to have a serious illness. I think it's important to say that there are many people, in fact, most people who get COVID have an illness that's not that serious. Uh, and there are some people who've been infected and don't even know it because they never had symptoms. But when we test their blood, now that this type of testing is available, we see that they've had an infection without ever having actually experienced an illness. So there's a lot of variation in what happens to an individual when they get infected with COVID. And if you're older or you have one of these pre-existing medical conditions, you're more likely to have a severe form of the illness requiring hospitalization, perhaps requiring uh, ICU care and putting you at higher risk for death. Then the other thing I want people to understand is that this is a very easy virus to catch. It spreads very quickly from person to person. So if you have a situation that exposes you to large groups of people, that will also put you at greater risk of contracting COVID. For example, all of us remember when we were told everyone should stay home and work from home. Well, some of us can do that because we have jobs which are largely done in an office on the computer or by telephone. You can work from home. But if you have jobs like being a grocery store clerk or a transit worker or a taxi driver or you work at the hospital, you can't do those jobs from home. And African Americans and Latinos are more likely to have the kinds of jobs that you can't do from home. They have to go out into the world and be around other people, and that gives them greater exposure to the COVID virus. So they may have an increased chance of contracting disease. So at this point, although we see that the death rates are different, we don't know if it's because more blacks and Latinos are catching the infection and the death rate is the same if you look only at people have the infection or if once you have it, you actually have a greater likelihood of dying. There are a lot of things we don't know yet about this virus. We are collecting lots of data. There's lots of research going on, but some of the numbers that are coming out are what we call raw data. They're just raw numbers 
they don't take everything into account. So the story is still unfolding. Talking a little bit more about some of the things that put you at risk, if you use public transportation, again, because you have one of those jobs where you can't stay home, that puts you at greater risk than if you have a car and you can drive everywhere on your own, or if you can afford to take a taxi or an Uber. So some of the difference in what we're seeing may just be because people have different levels of financial resources. And if you have to do things, again, to put you with large groups of people, that's greater exposure and that's greater risk. And then there are also differences in where we live and who we live with. If you have, you know, a what's called a nuclear family with, you know, a mother and a father, both of whom are working from home, and children who are being homeschooled and nobody's leaving the house, you're much less likely to contract COVID than if you live with your extended family. And there are some people who are going to jobs that they have to do outside the home, and they're going in and out of the house, and they live with elder parents or grandparents. So the number of people in your household and just the kind of housing you have, how close are you to other people, that's gonna put you at greater exposure. And again, African-Americans and Hispanics are more likely to live with extended families, more likely to live in households that have a large number of persons, more likely to live in areas where large numbers of people live very close to each other. So all of that increases the risk and all of those things may be contributing to the differences we're seeing uh, in how COVID is impacting Blacks and Latinos compared to whites. So if you are vulnerable because of a medical condition that you have, it's really important that you try to stay away from other people as much as possible. These are the people who really need to stay at home. They need to practice social distancing, which means staying at least six feet away uh, from other individuals. And we all know that we should be using social distancing when we're out in public. But if you have a family member who is in this high risk group because they're older and perhaps they have some chronic medical conditions, it might be important to even social distance at home. And so those individuals may need to try to not be around other members of the family. And this is really hard for, for many of our cultures. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know I come from a tradition where we hug and kiss when we greet each other, but that's exactly how the virus gets spread. So at least while uh, we're going through this epidemic, we really need to change the way we behave, not just when we're out in public, but the way we're at, we, the way we behave at home. If we're living with someone who is in this high risk group because they're over 65, uh, or they have one of these medical conditions that puts them at risk. And this is hard for people to understand and hard for people to do. If you are vulnerable to getting COVID because of your job or because you have to go out uh, into the world because of the way you travel, then it's very important that you wear a mask, that you try to stay at least six feet away from other people. And the most important thing is be very careful about what you touch and wash your hands as frequently as you can. The, you know, the virus does not fly through the air from somebody who's walking six feet away from you on the street. The way the virus gets transmitted from person to person is that someone who has the virus, they may cough or sneeze or have, you know, droplets uh, from uh, their, their respiratory symptoms that go onto a surface, or they may touch their face and then they touch a surface. Then you come along and touch that surface. Well, you're still safe because it doesn't go through the skin. It's when you touch that surface and then you take your hand and you put it near your mouth, near your face, you flip your hair, 
you know, th this is how the transmission happens. It's face to hand to hand to face. So you have to be really careful when you're out in public about not touching surfaces that other people have touched. Wearing gloves can be helpful, but again, you need to not touch your face while you're wearing the gloves. So hand washing, wearing the mask, learning not to touch your face, trying to be very aware of that. These are the steps you really have to take to protect yourself if you are around other people. You know, health disparities have been with us for a long time. They existed before COVID. And I like to distinguish between health disparities, which are things uh, that are differences in health because of a certain group that you belong to, such as African Americans or Hispanics, and health care disparities, which are really differences in the way people get treated in the health care system. And both of these things are a problem. Health care organizations have to be very careful and really uh, audit themselves to make sure that they are all, always treating all of their patients the same way. Hopefully they're actually uh, looking at various measures of their, their quality of care uh, to make sure they're doing that. But healthcare organizations also have to be mindful of all of the other things that affect health and they have to address their patients' medical needs, but they also have to have systems in place to help address patients' social needs or their uh, information needs or um, their uh, psychosocial needs, all of the things that go into uh, affecting their health. So health care organizations have a large role. To play. I want to redo that one. So healthcare organizations have a large role to play in helping to eliminate health disparities and to achieve health equity. I guess the other thing I'd like to say is that I've been dismayed by a lot of the coverage, a lot of what you're seeing in the press, whether it's on television or on social media. It, it really is designed to sensationalize what's going on, and I think a lot of it is very frightening. And I want to caution people against the fear. There, it, the risks are real, but if you do the things that will keep you safe, if wear a mask, if you stay six feet away from people, if you wash your hands, if you learn to not touch your face, you shouldn't be constantly fearful that something terrible is going to happen to you because the fear is also bad for you. So understand the risk, but don't be afraid. We will get through this. Most people who get COVID recover fully, uh, although that's not necessarily the story that you're hearing in the press. Uh, so we will get through this. Be careful, but don't be afraid. Thank you for joining me today. I hope uh, this information has been helpful. I wish all, you and all of your family the best. Stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.